So, here we are. Hello, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Internet. Um, you're probably wondering why I gathered you all here today. In my left hand is a blue pill, and in my... No, it's nothing to do with the Matrix. Um, my name's Ross, um, I'm 28 years old. Uh, I'm growing a beer for charity, uh, however, I'm probably going to grow it back afterwards. Uh, I just want to tell you a little bit about my kind of story um, and some underlying things that maybe some of you didn't know, some of you probably didn't know. Um, so yeah, um, I had a kidney transplant on the 24th of August 2015, last year. Um, just over seven months post-transplant. Things are going great, by the way. Um, and yeah, I want to fill you in about basically what the crack is over the last kind of 20 years of my life. Um, that had ups, downs, ins and outs and just... You know, a bit of insight, a bit of education, more or less. Um, so yeah, um, let's talk about it. When I was eight years old, I was diagnosed with uh, nephrotic syndrome, or more specifically, membranous proliferative glomerulonephritis. nephritis. Try and say that when you're drunk. Yeah, I was, I was, I was uh, diagnosed with MPGN um, when I was eight years old. Uh, for the first kind of five, ten years, it was all really quite quick, as it is when you're young. Um, I went for a biopsy shortly after what they thought was the diagnosis, and then the biopsy confirmed it. So, I had a biopsy, don't remember too much of that, woke up a little bit sore. Um, as I got a little bit older, a little bit more active, um, I played a lot of sports and such, uh, growing up, football and things like that, done a lot of running, then started playing rugby. Uh, muscle cramps, something that almost don't relate with uh, kidney failure, uh, renal uh, issues is his muscle cramps and they were the sorest things I've ever experienced in my entire life. Um, out for a jog, out for a run, out with some friends, walking. We used to walk from uh, the Gary and Bridge to Strathlyde Park as a big group and we would get there and we would go to the cinema or we would go to uh, the movies, I already said that, or something to eat and um, I would disappear into the corner like, what's that guy doing? It's like, oh he's got cramp, <laughs> idiot. They were really sore, they were uncontrollable. You, I would get them in the middle of the night, three, four, five, six times a night. You wake up with your leg in traction. Yeah, I'm not afraid to say I was in tears a few times, it was very uncomfortable. Um, and we didn't have an explanation. We asked specialist consultants, they sent me to a neurologist, um, and ultimately it just came back to uh, the whole idea of, you know, maybe not eating right or something. So yeah, muscle cramps. Um, Weight, uh, on and off, long-term high doses of prednisolone steroids, in which, from what I hear, don't actually put your weight up, but they, they mess with your appetite. Uh, I've been as heavy as 22 and a half stone, um, and as light as 11 stone. Uh, for a guy who's 6 foot 4, 11 stone's pretty light. Uh, the 22 and a half stone end came from steroids and also water retention. You retain quite a lot of water on steroids. Um, Basically, that and obviously with pure renal function, your uh, your kidneys don't operate properly. So, uh, all the fluids that you take in, your kidneys don't filter it back out your blood properly. It doesn't create urine, doesn't go into the bladder, um, and you end up retaining it. Uh, ankles, legs, waist, hips, back of your neck, face, swollen face, um, anywhere. Uh, very emotional. You know, very vain guy. So, swollen face was the nicest of things. Um, no, I'm not vain at all, otherwise I wouldn't have a massive beard. Water retention is also bad for your circulatory system. Um, it presses, can increase blood pressure, things like that. It's exactly the same way that weight does. If you're heavy, you can have issues with blood pressure and such. So yeah, water retention, weight gain. Uh, and the big one is sleep. Uh, I was tired all the time from about the age of 17, 18 onwards. I was playing rugby. We would uh, go out, play a game on a Saturday, warm up, play the 80 minutes, cool down, and then the guys would go out for dinner or a bit of, a bit of a drink, and a lot of the time when the guys would vouch for me, I would go home. I was exhausted. I would have to sleep. Uh, and likewise, out with friends, if I'd been out at work during the day, we're at a friend's house having a bit of a laugh, uh, I would fall asleep. My friends took really good advantage of this. Uh, if Billy's still got videos, I'm sure he'll attach it to this link. Um, it was quite an emotional time for me, getting hit in the face with stuff when I was unconscious. Um, good times. And lastly, um, long-term effects of steroids include um, thinning of the skin. So in my rugby playing days, rugby, as you all know, is a very brutal sport. It can be very physical. I was bruising in odd places, like uh, across my chest, forearms, things like that. But yeah, you end up with thin skin, uh, ultimately, and 
I think two seasons ago I ended up with nearing 100 stitches within 10 months, uh, three very large scars and if you know me, if you're friends with me, if you have me on Facebook, you, you'll know what they look like, you've seen them, they're pretty gnarly man. Um, and yeah, they took a lot of healing up as well, low renal function, heal slower as well and you don't heal very well on uh, steroids either. So yeah, these are some of the side effects that I've dealt with growing up and such and a lot of people don't really notice them because they just think, ah, he's tired, yeah, he's got a cramp, but it's like, I've had it since I was like a wee boy, more or less. And the thing is, the skin one was a scary one, you know, sat up from my tackle and the mince was hanging out my leg. Um, that's a bad expression. Sorry, apologies. Um, so yeah, symptoms. Um, meds. Uh, also, when I was 18 and 19, I was a rebellious late-on teenager, I decided to throw my meds. Um, anyone taking any advice whatsoever from fitness, uh, not fitness, health professionals, NHS, private healthcare, and they tell you to do something, please do it, do as you're told, you're not smarter than these people, you don't know better. I threw my meds away and this is where the, my weight dropped to really light, I had no muscle, uh, no strength, I was very tired and lethargic all the time and you know, I probably looked like I was in okay shape. However, I wasn't, and it wasn't about what you could see outside, it was about what you could, what was going on inside, you know. It looks alright, I wasn't okay at all. I was very unhealthy and I was very ill. So I went back on my meds, and, you know, I thought I knew better, and I didn't. Back on my meds and, and things got a little bit better for me. And, yeah, and then, <laughs> more recently, I um, started dialysis uh, about a year ago, around about now, a year ago actually. Um, so yeah, I was on dialysis for a while, that was an emotional time. It was a year ago, end of January, a year ago, February. Uh, I went in, I got a phone call after a consultation, I had to go in and uh, they had a wee chat with me regarding potassium levels. Now if you're a renal patient, you'll know all about potassium levels. Um, potassium was too high and they called me to go back in uh, to get it rechecked. I got it rechecked and it raised even more. Uh, it was 7.7 .7 and then on the second check it was 9 point something. For those who don't know, potassium in high doses can have weird effects on your body in terms of your your, your heart and um, your cardio system. Um, it, it, it basically, I'll tell you what happened to me. So I went in, I had high blood pressure, I lay down on a bed, they hooked me up to an ECG, and my resting heart rate varies because of health and stuff like that, but my resting heart rate hooked up to the ECG was like 165, 170 beats per minute, lying in a hospital bed with my top off. My chest was convulsing. Um, it was scary because you can have a heart attack from it, so it was terrifying. Um, yeah, so that was the start of dialysis for me. They said we're going to dialyze you. Wasn't really prepared for it. However, you know, needs to be done, and I was very grateful for it. I wouldn't want it to happen again, but um, you know, it done the job. Uh, yeah, it was, it was good. And then. Uh, for a long period of time prior to that, my dad had been getting geared up to give me a kidney, which was really cool. Um, really cool, actually. He was getting tested. Mum had went, Robbie had went as well. Uh, Sarah had put her name forward too, you know. Uh, but my dad was the closest match by a country mile. I'm my father's son. He was by far the closest match. Um, uh, and they continued on with him. Turns out he's extremely healthy. Could have fooled me. No, I'm only kidding. The guy's he's an athlete. He's a, he's a hero. He's some man. So yeah, he was super fit, super healthy, uh, close enough a match, and then we got a phone call on the 12th of August. So how's that, Mr. Broom? Yeah, how's it doing? You okay? Yeah, well, we've got a date for your op. Oh my God, tremendous. Um, oh, the 24th of August. I was like, that's like 12 days away. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome, isn't it? I was like, no, it's terrifying. It wasn't terrifying. After going through what I went through, I'd do it a million times over now based on how I felt before transplant and during dialysis and how I feel now. Right now, this is the the biggest, strongest, fittest, fastest and healthiest, and not just physically, but mentally, my well-being, my demeanor, I feel a million times better, and I, I go through what I had to go through a hundred times over to get this feeling again, I really would. Um, yeah, as long as big stands up for it, I'm game two. So yeah, transplant, and my dad, I can't say, I really can't say enough good things about him, um, he is a, uh, He's some guy, uh, I, I love him till to the ends of the earth and, and what he's done for me is, is never good. I'm never going to be able to repay that and I'll be eternally grateful for it too. Yeah, he's a cool guy, man. Uh, and, and the love from my, from my family, from, yeah, from everyone who really stuck by me and got me through that. Uh, you know who you are. 
yeah, it was, it was a tough time. But it's over now. Um, during all this, on top of all that, uh, my older cousin, uh, Claire, on my dad's side, um, she also had long-term renal problems for a long time as well. Um, and at a similar time uh, as mine, it got bad um, and she started dialysis too. She had done uh, PD dialysis, different type. Um, and yeah, it was really cool. Uh, there's two types of dialysis. As far as I'm aware, I could be wrong. Any f medical experts on here will correct me. So I done uh, hemodialysis where I had a, a catheter fitted in my chest right here. There's maybe a little mark still here as well. So right across here -ish, um, and I basically two tubes uh, hooked up to a machine. Blood comes out through one tube through the machine and then goes in through the other tube. And the machine acts as an artificial kidney. So yeah, a little bit on dialysis. Uh, I was doing 30 hours a week, uh, which if you don't do anything else is not that bad. However, I was still in the job I'm currently in, um, which I'm still very grateful for. Uh, it was really, really tough doing 30 hours in the hospital and 40 hours uh, in a job as well. But work were tremendous, they were very, very accommodating. I can't commend them enough for that at the time. They were great, they were really amazing. Um, and yeah, uh, something else. Uh, Claire, back to Claire. Claire, uh, what a trooper, man. Um, she's gone through it all. She's absolutely killing it now, man. She's doing so well, and I'm so, so happy that she's now getting to feel what I'm getting to feel, and, and that we got it. Two transplants within five months of each other. How amazing, and what, what are the chances of that happening? Tremendous. It really is something else. Uh, and I'm so glad she's doing well too. Uh, I had something else. But yeah, now uh, post transplant, it's me just over seven months. Uh, I'm back lifting weights, I'm power lifting. Uh, nice weather's coming in, so I'm doing a bit of running. Uh, I've been swimming, uh, looking at possibly going back at sports. I uh, can't play rugby anymore, but basketball, some touch rugby. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's all looking up, man. It's all amazing. Uh, it's everything couldn't look any better for me. And, and I'm going to do everything I can to. Uh, increase the longevity uh, of the kidney and stay healthy and stay strong and keep doing what I'm doing uh, and I want to do everything I can to, to, to help kidney research in terms of what they do to to accommodate for the people like myself and my cousin they, they took so much care of us they've done so well and it's like a I'm not religious but it's like a gift from God man it's something else it really is uh, Stan being God uh, yeah it's uh, it's pretty epic uh, and yeah, so that's that's really my story, guys. That's me uh, giving you a little bit of the insight of what's happened to me and what my family have dealt with over the last 20-odd years since I was very young. And it's went, you know, in a, a gradual decline and then recently just took a spike back up and <sighs> makes you smile, man. Uh, it really makes you smile. It's something else. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's awesome. That's my story. Uh, attach to this link, uh, there'll be a Just Giving link. Don't feel pressured or anything into uh, donating, you know. Uh, but if you don't, you're a terrible person, you know. If you don't donate, then you've obviously not had your soul touched like all these other people who are currently crying. Um, there's been napkin for you, just wipe the tears away. Yeah, yeah, it's been emotional. It really has. I expected this to be a little bit more, uh, a little bit funnier. Uh, in, it's not turned out that way, unfortunately. Uh, all this uh, sincerity. So yeah, cool. That's us guys, we're done. Uh, I'm done talking. Uh, it's down to you to make the difference. Uh, appreciate it. Thanks very much for listening. Stay strong.